Hey everybody, welcome to Woodworking Wisdom. My name's Colin Way. Sorry for a little bit late. Me and fun is uh, me and me and fun. Me and Ben are just having a little bit of fun here. Um, at my expense, don't worry. Um, today's all gonna be about uh well, we, I say be about is uh, about making a little threaded box, but in the shape of a pumpkin, because the that day's turning up soon. The uh, uh, next week we've got Halloween, so yeah, just a little bit of a fun piece, really. Of course, you don't have to make it in the, the form of a pumpkin; you can do whatever you want, really. Um, but that's what we're going to do. All right, Ben. <laughs> um, you know the form. Ben's on cameras and all the the, uh, the trickery over that end. Uh, any questions that you get, just ask him, and uh, on the chat function and he'll ask me um hopefully um away we go and we've got some really really cool bits of timber here this is a bit of spalted beach a friend of mine brought up for me the other day um it's um, sort of half and half half dry half not um it's not moving too much this is going to be the little um the little piece that we're making so a little little pumpkin box we've got a little lid here that i've just threaded so we're going to use some threading tools that's the other thing of course and i'm using the crown threading tools Instead of threading that very soft, spalted uh, beach, though, I've just used a little bit of um, satin wood to, to create the thread there. And then on here, I think this is a little bit of either partridge wood or wenge um, or panga panga even. I'm not sure, but the same, a little bit harder than the walnut that um, I've used for the lid. And then my just a little quick sanded lid. I want to do the, the key areas. So obviously on this one first, we'll create the rough shape. We don't really have enough time to carve these in, but we'll talk about it. Um, and it's, that's entirely up to you what you use for that. I used a mixture of, of different things, rotary tools, um, the Japanese rasps and things like that. So we'll talk about that again in a minute. But we're going to hollow out this little pot um, and then we're going to do a little inset. Um, uh, we thread the inset before we put it in. So I'm gonna, I've am gonna got a little bit of satin wood to do that with. Then once we've done that and put it in, we then can um, cut our, our mail thread and then just make the little lid. This is quite a nice way um, to create this lid. Um, most of it is sanded away, but um, I'll show you how to do that. So it, we won't get the whole thing finished today, um, but we'll show you how to do the key areas of, of the, the pot itself. And like I say, you don't have to do uh, a pumpkin pot. You can do whatever you want, really. Just nice little thing to, to practice with, get, your, get all of your um, uh, skills working. So there we are. All right, so that's our challenge none of that is glued together yet so um <laughs> i'm screwing everything together it's probably going to come out on me yeah it is um but yeah that's where we are so spotwood beach it's beautiful to turn i'm going to use a 3-8 bowl gouge to start with so one of those and we're just going to get it down to cylinder create a hole point and then we can start thinking about the shape the shape is entirely up to you um, that was my interpretation of a pumpkin, but it's like turning any piece of fruit or vegetable. Um, it's entirely up to you what you what shape you want to do, what variety you want to turn, for instance. Um, okay, so lay speed to zero as usual and turn the lathe on. All right, Ben, are we good for questions at the moment? Just carry on. Holler at me when ready. Lay speed up a little. Just down to a cylinder first. Let's get a tool that's actually sharp. Because that's not cutting that. So two seconds. Right on one side. Let's see with my larger one. There we go. That'll do it. There we are. So just down to a cylinder. That's my first job. Get the lay speed up a little bit now. So I'm up there to 1200 revs. Now I'm going to start thinking about a hole point. I did before we, before I put this piece on the lay, there was a little bit that I broke off just because I didn't want it flying up and hitting me. So that bit came off. So I just peeled that away first. Um, it's not going to impact the shape of the piece. Mm. 
Now, before I go any further, let's decide what jaws I'm going to use to grip this one. I think I'm going to go sort of mid-size, uh, mid-size sort of gripper jaws. So let me show you the ones I mean, and I'll get a measurement off them as well. So there we are. Those are the mid-size grippers. Um, I'm just going to take a measurement on there. And whilst I'm doing that, I'm going to go with some questions. Yes, Ben. Hi, Colin. So we've got a question from Ashley. Um, they're asking, um, well, they've just been given an old Axminster Perform CCL lathe. CCSL lathe. Um, would any of the current chucks work with it? And is it an okay lathe to start on? Yeah, CC um, uh, CCL or CCBL, I think it would have been. I haven't heard of an SL, but um, it, either of those two, yeah, no problem at all. The thread size is a one inch by eight. So when you're using chucks or buying chucks, you need to go for a one inch by eight chuck. Um, and that's a one inch across by eight threads per inch um it's a, a nice mechanism because it's a it's a mechanical variable speed so you turn the machine on then you can use the lever to change the speed up and down and of course with the mechanical variable speed the torque also changes whilst you do that which we don't get from electronic machines when we change the speed on here if we want to get a slightly torquier um belt position we have to physically move the belt on the one that you've got you don't have to do that this does it for you all right so yeah no nice machine to use that one um i made a living out of using one of those for a long time or the workshop version of one of those anyway so all right there we are i've set my gouge to those jaws let me just that looks a little bit small nope it's fine perfect There we are. And now, I think before I do anything else, let's just get that held in its final resting place so we can then um, do the outside shape and hollow out at the same time. So move that over. Center can come out and our chuck can go on. I then need to add those jaws. So let's just go with just one of my SK114s. Take them jaws out. So I've taken all my security screws out of my chucks here so I can move, um, so I can change jaws quickly. Um, so normally, when you buy one of these chucks, you'll have a screw in that means that you can't take those jaws out unless you make it happen. So there was the, if I can just show the camera there, little, little red dot. Normally the jaws come out to that point. They won't go any further because there's a little screw in number four jaw where is it in that hole i've taken the screw out so i can just take my jaws out quickly so if you're thinking about if, if you're wondering oh how do i know um how far to to move the jaws there is a safety position there and it's all done for you um like i say if you do want to remove the, the jaws then you can remove the screw Get rid of those so i'm gonna add these these are just called what we refer to as a Dove H. No reason, it's just that's that's the name we've given it. Adding my jaws in order. go so nice big gripper on this one as in deep gripper so that can close up and grip onto my nice deep foot so i'm really secure there i know that we're not going to have any issues with um the piece coming loose i'll clean off that front face and then start thinking about the shape and we're going to drill a hole down through the middle as well to make the hollowing a little bit easier. A little bit lower. Good. Right. 
I'm going to go by the shape of the pumpkin that I've already ma already made. It's a fairly slow curve. So I'm just bullying out all the waste and then I'll get some finishing cuts going. Just going to go down to a smaller gouge now because our pumpkin comes right the way over in the curve at the, at, in the centre. There we go. Right, let's just stop the lathe, see how that beach is behaving. Probably, it shouldn't be because it's bolted and it's, it's a little bit pithy, but it's not actually not too bad. I've got to be careful because I've got my apple head on thinking um, that it's a shape similar to an apple and it's not at all. So I've got to get that out of my mind. Stop thinking shapes of apples. It's a much squarer uh, curve on a pumpkin. There we are. That'll do that. I just want to just cut or relief some of the back. I'm using the, the um, side scrape from my parking tool to give myself a little bit more room. There we are. I think that's... No, I'm happy with that shape. I think we can start thinking about hollowing now. Um, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. That can be sanded later on. How are we doing, Ben? Any questions or are we good? Um, so, gentleman with Turner said uh, with the uh, changing of the jaws that you made it look so easy. And wouldn't it be better just to have one chuck for each set of jaws? It would be better to have <laughs> one chuck for each set of jaws. And very much what, um, what certainly what I do as a demonstrator, I carry um, four or five different chucks around already set up. But, um, you know, that, that costs a, a little bit of money. <laughs> Um, so I understand that not everybody can do that. So yeah, it, it's important that people know how to change the jaws because it does cause problems still. And don't worry, not only um, problems with uh, beginner wood turners, but even some of our staff here get uh, you know problems when it comes to changing. So um, I do understand. And it's just you just got to follow the rules. You got to follow the sequence of one to four. Uh, make sure each each jaw is gripped fully before you you start and move on to the next one. And then Jim B is asking about um, Jason's box scraper. That um, is, do you know? Do we know if there's a video of that box scraper being sharpened? Um, I can't. I can't remember. I know Jason has done a few sharpening videos. Yeah, yeah. I'll, again, if I'm honest, I'm not sure. Pop, pop that in the in an email, and we'll double check that. And um, if so, we'll put a link out. Um, at the bottom of this video, can't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll and put I'll the link on here. Check with Jason in a bit. Yeah, if you ask the question on the video, um, Jim, we'll put uh, put the link below the question. Okay, if we can find one. If not, we'll make sure he does one. Okay, so let's just have a a look how deep. So I'm going to go. I'm going to be a little bit careful, a little bit cautious. So right there, not overly deep. Mm. 
a little bit of noise on the retrieve there. So what I'll do is I'll just get a little bit of wax to put on there. Um, and we we were discussing drilling last week, and someone said about a chart um, for drilling for Forstner bits and things like that. Now that's fine. Drilling charts are available for metal, but not on timber. Timber changes. Even the same tree can have a different texture. You can different orientation. Whether you're going end grain, side grain, Forstner bit, sawtooth bit, lip and spur a bit, they're all going to be slightly different. So. You, there is no chart available, despite what people are saying. It's a, a case of um, experience and starting slow at all if you're unsure. Any little signs like this, back off a little bit. Don't go too fast. That little bit of wax is just enough to stop that screeching. This friction is all that's happening. Again, nice and gently on the retrieve. And because this is a little bit damp, this timber, I'm retrieving it quicker than I might normally do. Because watch these shavings. Look how they expand as they come out. They're, they're, they're filling that gap. So what that will do then is um, create a lot of friction on the workpiece. So just clear those shavings often. There we are. That's down to my mark making sure I've got one hand on the, the drill chuck so it doesn't accidentally get left inside and then become a, a missile across the workshop. So there, right. That's done. So let's just turn them off for the minute. I'm going to take the tailstock off and we're going to hollow. I'm going to the Easy Wood hollowing tools, but of course you can use whatever you want um, to do this. I'm using the Easy Wood because... Um, I'm very much a traditionalist when it comes to wood turning tools. However, um, since discovered Easy Wood, there's certain of the, certain um, members of their tools that I love. So I think I've done a demonstration on the the little um, beading uh, scrapers are fantastic for um, the basket weave effect, that sort of thing. And I've used them on a on a video sh showing that the hollowing tools are really really cool. Um, nice little tip: they they hollow really efficiently. And there are different types of hollowing. If you think about the, the woodcut type of hollowing, they're fantastic for, uh, for doing big open uh, mouth uh, vases, um, hollow forms, that sort of thing, because they create a, a, a ribbon. They cut so you can clear the shavings. A little tiny thing like this, I want a scraping hollower. I want to produce chips and, and sort of small shavings so it doesn't clog. I can pour them out easily. I don't want to produce ribbons on this. Um, so different hollowing types for different um, vessels. Yes, Ben. Um, so Frederick's asking, uh, is it okay to use the uh, sorry the o'donnell jaws for holding um, yeah will they yeah, no take problem. the forces i did look at those uh, a minute ago but this is a little bit soft and the o'donnell jaw dovetail was a little bit small and i thought i don't want to i don't want to sort of chance of uh, sort of throwing it out of the chuck so that's why i went for the grippers because this is quite soft if it's a, a regular timber no spalting in it then absolutely i use the, the o'donnell's a lot for doing that yes yeah and Jim's asking about the Forsner bit. Is it a bit longer than usual? This um, particular one was, yeah. One. Yeah, sorry, Ben. Uh, yes, a little bit longer than usual. So that's my this is my um, side-cutting Forsner bit, and this is my uh, sawtooth uh, Forsner bit. So you can see the difference uh, in length there. Yeah. Generally, the longer ones you'll pay a little bit more for. That's the other thing. Um, let's just turn that speed up a wee bit.
So I'm just feeling the bottom there, feeling that, that little center point. Bringing the tool out. There we go. Right, let's just have a, a pour out of those shavings. And rather than take the piece out of the, the chuck, let's take the chuck and the piece off the lathe. And then you can pour it off. You know that it's not going to then go off centre. Okay, so we're getting down to the depth, really. So I'm just going to use the next tool, which is the, the easy wood again. But this time we're going to get in underneath that neck. So we're going to use this one. So let's go just a little bit closer. Same speed, that's absolutely fine. Good. Let's again. We'll just get a pinch of thickness. We mustn't forget. We don't want to take this too thin because we've got those big veins to scribe into this piece. And I think, yeah, no, that's fine. Happy with that. Uh, yeah, Ben. Questions. So yeah, we had a few questions in Cohen. Um, first one is from Dances with Aardvarks. I'm not sure we're going to know this, but do you know if the Axminster Junior Chuck body is fully hardened? He wants to drill a few holes in it and wants to know what he's up against. The bodies won't be hardened. It's the mechanism that is. So the, the scroll is the hardened bit. The pinions are the hardened bit. So those wearing bits, but the body will not be hardened, no. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and then... Oh, sorry. Gentleman Woodturn is asking... Um, are we using a new lens on the end camera? Um, it, the quality of the picture is brilliant and the field of definition. So this one on the oh, end. Uh, no, we're not using um, a different lens. We're using a, a much more expensive camera <laughs> by several thousand pounds. Um, we've had a couple of um, cameras go down, so we're, we're using the videographer's expensive camera. So they've <laughs> had to come and set it up for us and everything. So, yeah. They're, they're, I don't know whether they're they're, um, they're wise for doing that, but yeah, this is a difference, isn't it? Throw money at things, I tell you. Yes, Ben. Um, so Cliff's asking um, about the Easywood tools. Um, are that that disc is that flat, horizontal on the uh, when when you're cutting? So Easywood will tell you to hold the tool. Uh, horizontally and I try and do that but sometimes my body and the instincts take over and I put a very slight tilt on the tool so I have the handle slightly higher sometimes and um, probably number one camera there ben. Um, so sometimes I'll have that slightly higher without realizing they do say um, have this, the tool horizontal though um, and it just seems to work because these cutters are quite small. When you go to bigger cutters, that's when it gets a little bit more aggressive because you're physically taking more off and you're, uh, there's a bigger working area. Uh, but with the small cutters, they work so well. Um, so, yeah, um, like all easy woods, you've got um, the ma maximum overhang. So just bear that in mind. OK, so work with that rather than go past it because otherwise the leverage kicks in that way. Um, but, yeah, no, it works really, really well. Um, horizontal all slightly raised um, guys i think that's enough with that piece for the minute now i'm going to keep that um, where it is we're just going to pour it out i can take that out of the chuck now i just want to make sure i'm happy with it before i do 
get rid of all that gunk. There we are. That will leave us plenty of room then to, to carve our veins in it. But that looks good. Happy with that. Um, we're going to move on now to the little plug that's going to go inside. And we're going to do our first little thread. And then I'll make that fit this recess that we've got here. I haven't, but you could put a little um, step, so a little landing for it to slot into. Um, I haven't. I was just going to slot it in and um, and line it up myself. So, um, And don't forget, any, everybody, we haven't done any sanding on this. I'm going to probably not do any sanding tonight um, just because. So let's take that one off. And we'll put our bit of timber in for our thread. Oh, I have prepped up all of this timber um, because I realized this is quite a big project and I didn't want to overrun too much. So I've prepped it to, to hold in the O'Donnell jaws. And I've got a little bit of satin wood for our little thread. So all, all ready. It's going to fit in into the ODs. Clean off that front face. So all I've done is rough down it and made a... a a clean back to it so I can hold it in the chuck. There we are. Now we're going to drill, drill that out. I'll use the same drill bit that we've got here. Remember what I said, keep it nice and clean. I think those shaving is coming. Now I'm not going to go massively deep with the um, with the the thread. We don't need to. So I'm going to use only going to need to to cut the first say 12 mil, say half an inch. But we're only going to use the first six mil, quarter inch. Um, so I'm going to prep for that. So the tail sock can come out of the way. We'll clean out what we've got on the inside. I don't want to take it out of the chuck, so I don't want it to come away. Let's get a get a pointy thing in there to get rid of some of those shavings. There we are. So before I start cutting, I'm just going to put a little taper on that leading edge. It's really, really going to help me when it comes to cutting the thread. So I can use anything for that. Scooters will work. There we go. That's fine. Yes, Ben. Fire away. Um, so James is asking how thick the walls were on the pumpkin. Um, we've left it around about a quarter inch, so about six mil thick. That's going to give us enough room then to um, to cut those splines in. So you can sort of see, um, sort of see here, this thickness here. It's about six mil. I've sort of tried to keep it nice and even. I've got a little bit more um, room in the bottom because we're going to come back over into the bottom um, like this one. So just come back in and over again. I don't know if you can see that profile. So I just left a little bit of space there for that. And then Mark um, has cut some sycamore this morning into boards. Um, is it best to lay them flat or stand them up to dry? So if you want to keep them white, stand them up. That's what the old trick was in the timber yards to keep things white to stop that water settling. Um, then stand them up. Any white timbers, so sycamore, 
um, hollies, your know, maples, those sorts of things. Nice stood up right. If you're not worried, if you're going to cover them and they're in a barn, that sort of thing, then you can stick them inside um, and, and have them standing horizontally. All right. So we're going to go now nice and slow. I would like to be around about um, 280 to 300. There we are. I'm going to start a nice little cut to start with. I don't have an armrest here, so we're just using the tool rest, which works quite nicely. And I'm slowly bringing the handle around. You can see there, look, I'm coming around nice and gently. There we are. Let's stop and have a look and see what we have. This is an 18 TPI thread on this one. So we're all the way in now. don't know whether the camera can see that. I'll bring this out in a moment. Not really at the moment. What about number? Yeah. Okay. I'll bring the camera up in a moment. We've got a nicely formed thread there, though. 18 TPI. So what I want to do next, I'm going to tidy up this bottom so that the, the bottom section isn't a great start. So let's clean up with my gouge. Get the little skew in there just to give a nice finish. And then taper the front again. Okay, so we've got our thread on the inside. Um, we know that's going to be good um, because it followed the, the thread chasing tool. So now I'm going to make this diameter the same as this one so it can fit inside. And then we can part this one off. Yes, Ben. Um, question from Steve here. Um, if you were going, to, sorry, if you were going to have just one CBN wheel for sharpening, what grit would you go for? Um, I would go for the finer ones, 180, because you can still use your carborundum wheel for reshaping and then do the refining on the 180, because you'll find that you'll be using the 180 a lot more, because once you've got a shape, you don't need to use the, the, the coarse one anymore. So the coarse one's seldom used once you've got your shapes to all your tools. You're just resharpening each time. So 180 grit all day. Yep, good. That's what some of the others are saying here. So that's good stuff. Um, JPN's asking, is that Ceylon um, satin wood? Or have you used yellow heart to chase threads? Have I used yellow heart? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. I, if I'm honest with you, I haven't heard of it before. Um, but this, this was the densest thing I had. I had some of that, that when gave it was a little bit coarse that broke up a, a little bit, but anything that's really, really dense boxwood is a good one. Um, some of the blackwoods, the ebony's, those sorts of things. That's quite good as well. So, yeah. And then Mike's just asking about the speed you were going at when you were threading. 280 to 350 is your optimum. Right, let's just double check my sizes. 
So I'm going to oversize first. You can, of course, you can use a set of vernier. So I'm going to go oversize. Then we'll test. test should be too big yeah small cut just taper this cut don't try and get it bang on immediately taper the cut a bit more because once the front of a taper fits in you then have a dimension to cut to almost almost going in we're in all the way good nice little fit there So my next thing, we're going to go to a small parting tool. We're going to part this off, but I'm going to part off a little bit wi uh, wider than I need, and I'm going to cut back to that thread so I don't damage the thread that I've made. thread cut through there nicely and just in case you didn't see it earlier let's try and get that thread visible all right and then i'm going to hold back in our chuck as long as it'll close down that far Back in with the skew. So we got our internal thread. Let's just pop that into the box. I know we haven't finished the, the, the pot yet, but we're going to pop it in there. And that's going to make a nice little little seal with a thread in there. So now we've got to do the, the male part. So the bit that screws into that. So we're just going to take a measurement and we're going to then start cutting to that sort of size. So again, I'm going to cut oversized to, to start with. I like to work on about a millimeter's worth of thread. Um, 
So nice and big to start with. Cut to that measurement. Keep that close. And we're going to use, what have I got for that? I, oh, I've got another bit of this, this satin wood. It's cutting well. So that's going to slot in there. Take that other set of calipers away to make sure I don't run work to the wrong set now. All right, Ben. Yeah, Mark's okay. asking about, um, have you had a go at the smoking Viking yet? The smoking Viking. The smokers? I've done a lot of smokers recently. I've came to the point where I'm, I'm thinking everybody on the planet that I've demonstrated to has seen me do it. Um, I'm actually teaching it this weekend up at Hampshire Sheen's headquarters. We've got a nice little course starting there. We've got uh, five people on the course. I'm looking forward to that one. So, yeah, now I'm doing lots of Vikings. Okay, happy with that. Right, let's just clear a little bit more of this waste away. Let's clean so, that up. Yes, Ben. So Mark's back on Cohen. He said it's one that um, one that he made and said that it had given you some ideas loads of ideas yeah that, that's a good thing with it i do i really enjoy getting pe people's um photos um because i've got sort of clear ideas as to what i want to make but when you see things like that like the viking like um cynthia rourke's uh robbie the robot from um lost in space you then start thinking of your own things there was once somebody done um a night the other day and i thought well that's great if i i'm i'm gonna do a I want to do a dragon and with the smoke coming out of the nose sort of thing. So, yeah. Yeah, no, no, well done. Keep those pictures coming in. A little bit smaller. Oh, that's good. I'm happy with that. Let's give it a bit of a sand. And we can start thinking about the the other part of the thread. So different shape. Let me just show you both of these tools. Different shape. So the center one, we're coming from the inside. And now this one, obviously, we're coming from, from the outside. We're going to start with the, the tool really quite low. Same sort of speed, 280 to 350. Nice and low. And exactly the same here. You're going to start bringing the handle around to square everything up.
have a look and see if that's going in. A little bit more. A little bit deeper. check right it's just starting so what i'm going to do that's telling me i need to go a little bit smaller in diameter so what you can do now rather than turn anything down just sand it down take those peaks away and that'll allow you to go in a little bit deeper with the threading tool that's it now back to your speed You should be locked in now, so threads form, so we're just cutting deeper. Closer. Still a little bit more. Fire questions, Ben, if you have any while I'm doing this. It's nice and quiet. see where that's threaded on to now that's coming through nicely so we've got the thread right put that back in there and now what i want to do is i'm not just going to have this thread um uh, sort of you know in turn the the, the top here what i want to do if i can show you this one is create a little flat spot that we can then make the lid with so that's what I'm making now. That's going to go into the lid. 
Okay, so we're going to make a little flat spot that we can just pop that into with a little bit of glue and, and we've got a lid form. So I'm going to do that here. So I'm going to allow around about three eighths or 10, 10 mil of thread and then we'll make our little flat spot. We're going with, I'm going to go with a smaller drill bit, a little, little tiny force a bit on this one. And again, our calipers. So I'm going to measure the force a bit. Then we can drill a hole in the, in the lid and join everything together. They speed up. And beading and parting tool. So let's go. go then little bit of abrasive very fine abrasive to clean the tops of the threads up this is 600 grit and then we can part that little piece off just waiting for the lid and I'm just going to make a little lid to go on top of there a little nib off and I've got a really nice bit of black walnut for that cool and Paul's just asking if you could show the height uh, you have the tool rest for chasing the thread the well, the tool rest was pretty much um, on center, maybe a little bit above, like I'm talking two or three mil. But when you start off with a with a thread chasing tool, you, you've got to have a slightly downward slope when you're on that mill thread. So the, the, the handle high and then slowly come up as you start cutting the thread. And I'm at an angle to, to start with as well. So I'm bringing it in, bringing it in. Then the handle starts coming around um, as I start bringing that uh, that handle down, you see. And then you can straighten up the, the thread size, the thread. And the same on the inside as well. Have it just above, just so you can do that with the handle. And then from Frederick, he's asking, um, as the wood expands due to heat and et cetera, what allowances do you make? Um, for the thread? Hmm. Um, well, we don't um, make any allowances. If you know that you're going to get expansion contraction on the thread, then you need a rough turn at first. Let everything dry out and then cut your threads um, and choose wisely in terms of your timbers. So we've got very dense timbers here. Um, two reasons that I'm not trying to thread chase the beach is because of the movement. It's wet timber. Um, it won't cut a thread. It will better tear up badly, all those sorts of things. So we've gone dense timber, fully dried, um, and then we're we're confident then that that thread is going to stay right. I think that answers James' question as well. He's saying, do the threads swell up over time so you mm. can't unscrew them? No, I would add a little bit of wax or something to them so to <laughs> sort of seal them really. And then you think about the grainy or orientation that we're using here. So um, this is side grain and grain either side here. Um, when you're you, doing a hollow form on that or something like that, a lot of the time it's not going to be that way. The end grain is going to be at the top. So this creates a really nice strong um, sort of ring around there. So so hopefully it won't move. Um, certainly not too bad anyway. And then I think you can see your comments, folks, because you said um, John's just asked, would waxing the threads be a wise idea? <laughs> there you go. Probably not oiling because oiling will just swell the grain. So, so give it a wax instead. Okay, nearly there, everybody. Like I said, I'm not going to complete it. We're going to give you the basics of, of how it's done. So now I just want to do the last thing, which is the lid. So we're going to drill it out to be able to fit our thread, and then we're going to shape it. Just show you how I'm shaping it. So it's uh, to start off with a little hole here. This is its final resting place until the piece is ready to be sanded. So that can come away. Um, we're going to use a small 
create to start with just to clean that surface. Then back to our drill chuck with that, that smaller force in a bit. And I don't want to go deep because that if I go deep, that's going to impact um, on what I can do with the shape of the, the little stalk. So the thread there, I've got, it looks to me about six mil, but I could sand that down if I didn't want to go quite as deep as that. There we are. So that hopefully, if I turn the lathe off and we'll just have a look at our threaded area. Hopefully that should fit in there so I can glue it. Yeah, that's going to fit in there. Look, um, there is a little bit of gap there. Happy with that. Doesn't matter. That'd be, that'd be fine. Um, and I'm just going to put a little bit of a radius in there also. But no, all, all good there. Let's... Just a little bit of a curve. I can do a skew. Good. Right now, so shaping this stem, we've got to do, you've got to imagine uh, most of this is going to be sanded away. Okay. So I'm going to go in fairly flat to start with. We'll use a spindle gouge. It's nice and easy to get in there with a spindle gouge. go rough shape a little bit of abrasive in there just to round over the bottom i'm just using that to shape really i wasn't doing anything else but that's the basic shape at this stage then we can part off So that has given us this shape. So that's going to be the uh, the bottom of the stalk, and the stalk's going to come up here. We're going to sand that away now just to give us that, that sort of shape that's right. So I'm going to go with a different chuck. We're going to get the, the faceplate ring with the uh, sanding disc on. Where have I put my chuck key? Can you see? Oh, there it is. Take that bit of waste wood out. And then we're going C jaws. Sanding disc. And a coarse dust extraction. A little bit of light on the subject.
Okay, so that's enough with the big disc. We're going to go on to our rotary sanding um, discs now and finish that shape off. I'm going to start with about a 240 grit. <clears throat> so 240. Oh, that's 120. Don't want that. 240. And then we can just do our little finishing. Just refined or refine all that sanded area. Don't be too precious as well. You want a little bit of gnarliness left on this stalk. If you look at pumpkin stalks, they're all textured nicely. There we are. And then up to then up to the 400 and so on. I'm leaving a little bit of flatness there as they've been cut off the, the stalk. There we are. Let's join our pieces together. Uh, obviously now we've got to um, sand this turn them over and I would expand into um, the recess that we've just take the lid off expand into that recess to then take the base off using the tailstock but first of all but then taking it away at the last minute just to refine that shape and on that I would use a small set of pin jaws to expand into that recess alternatively you could use something like um, a friction or jam chuck or you can um, just use a push plate and then do the last little bit with again a little sanding disc but that needs to come off and the final shape done. Once that's done, everything needs to be glued together. I tend to go with an oil finish on these because it darkens the walnut. So let's pop that on there. In fact, let's just thread this together first. Let's just to prove that threads in. There we are. And that'll go over the top. And then all glued in, obviously not the threads, but the box lid. There we are, your little pumpkin box. It needs to be glued, screwed in and glued in nicely. All right, there we are. When we finished, when you've got everything done, you can get some color on it, you can sand it properly, and then that'll go all the way down. And you'll have your base done as well. And all I've done there just to embellish this piece is just put some little ribs to line up with our ribs on the outside as well. So there we are. Just a little bit of fun on the lathe, really. So any questions, Ben? No, no we're good for questions. We're good for questions. Yeah. Put my neck. Well, in that case... That's it from me. So thank you very much. Don't forget, if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. To subscribe, And make sure you hit the notifications button because the notifications button tells you when we're going to be going live um, or dropping another video out again. So um, thank you ever so much, everybody, for stopping by. Have a happy Halloween um, next week. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed that one. Loads of things to happen on there. So loads of threading and, um, and work holding. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much, everybody, and see you next time. Bye-bye.